When you think of Australian domestic dogs, you might think of the Kelpie. And I'm going to be really honest here. I don't even know what a Kelpie looks like. I'm a little bit ashamed to say that as I am a dog walker by trade. Um, but we don't get them over here, I don't think. Anyway, let's learn more about the Australian Kelpie. Hailing from the land down under, the athletic, muscular and energetic Australian Kelpie is an intense breed. These dogs are highly intelligent and driven and they enjoy working hard. So, right, I'm going to say what it sort of looks like in comparison to other dogs. Um, the first thing I notice, it's sort of got the, the markings of a Rottweiler with the two brown spots. Uh, it's got obviously Shepherd in it. It's got to have Shepherd in it. Um, maybe the German Shepherd, the, the Border Collie, that sort of herding nature. But I just keep seeing the, 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 two, the two brown patches from the Rottweiler markings. I don't think that's actually got any Rottweiler in it. But those are sort of the, the look that I'm getting. In fact, they always need a job to do and hanging around the house simply won't suffice. The breed was originally bred to herd livestock all day in the hot Australian climate and some of them were even used on cattle as well. People still use Australian Kelpies across Australia and the United States for their herding instincts. These canines also make loyal companion pets. They are affectionate with children and can get along with other pets if trained well. Australian Kelpies are great dogs to have around. And if you've been thinking of having a new furry companion, here are 10 interesting facts about the breed that you should know before you get one it, it mentions about the kelpie like working herding too many people buy dogs that have that working trait that that need to be worked and when i say need to be worked i don't necessarily mean actually working as a job but having the mental stimulation and the physical stimulation that that simulates work too many people get these dogs and then don't offer that offer that to the dog uh, and, and the dog then suffers. But before we get to the facts, we'd like to take a moment to express our thanks to all the original Kelpie yeah, owners gorgeous. on this video. The video would seriously not have been possible without them. So don't forget to check out these incredible dogs from their Instagram profiles that have been linked in the description below. And now, let's begin the list. Number 1. Their History Like so many of the breeds that exist today, the Kelpie came into being in the late 19th century, probably around 1870. The sheep and wool industry in Australia was becoming big business, and ranchers needed tough dogs who could not only handle the unruly sheep, but also the harsh environmental conditions and vast acreages. The Kelpie's ancestors include the Collie, a British herding type dog that may also have contributed to the development of the Border Collie, the English Shepherd and the Australian Shepherd. So I sort of got it with the... With the Border Collie, um, so have yeah. contributed to the Border with Collie. With the Border Collie, you sort of see the sort of stature, the sort of the low posture as well. The English Shepherd and the Australian Shepherd. Kelpies were brought to North America about a century ago and they adapted easily to the varying climates and terrain. Today they are rare in the sense that they are not commonly seen as pets, but thousands of them go to work every day on farms and ranches around the world. The breed is recognized by the United Kennel Club and registered by the North American Australian Kelpie Registry, which has the goal of preserving the Kelpie's natural working ability, purpose, conformation, temperament and overall good health. Number 2. Their Physical Appearance at first glance, the Australian Kelpie might be mistaken for a mixed breed mutt, with the pricked ears and curling tail of a German Shepherd. I'm brilliant, but I did say it looks like that and it is only about looking like that. But you, you see, like from this image here, um, if I can get it now, from there, you know, the, the tail is quite German Shepherdy. Um, it, it's not quite got the German Shepherds nowadays are quite lower at the back. It hasn't necessarily got that, but the pointy ears, for example, um, the, the muzzle, quite similar to a German Shepherd. Ears and curling tail of a German Shepherd, the short shiny hair of a smooth coated Border Collie and the black and tan coloring of a Rottweiler. I have not watched this video. Uh, and, and I'm proud of myself for noticing these different characteristics that other dogs seem to have. That's a, that's a grumpy looking dog, but it's gorgeous. 
but these medium-sized dogs are actually a breed of their own. Kelpies are strong and muscular dogs. Despite an average height of 17 to 20 inches, they can weigh up to 60 pounds. Slightly longer than tall, these dogs have broad chest and firm hindquarters that contribute to their flexible, energized appearance. Their head is long and narrow, and their medium-length tail is set low. Australian Kelpies have double coat that consists of a short and dense undercoat and a hard, straight and weather-repellent outer coat. They come with various color possibilities, including black and red, each with or without tan, and fawn, chocolate, and blue. Number 3. They're highly energetic. If Kelpies could talk, their favorite words might be, let's go. Yep, these dogs, whether bred for work or those bred as companions, have extremely high energy levels. They're workaholics and will run until they drop. So these certainly wouldn't be dogs that could live in a flat or probably wouldn't be good for people who are elderly. You know, they've got to be, they've got to be worked. And I said, I don't mean job wise all the time. I mean, mentally stimulated and physically stimulated. The breed was made to withstand the heat and rugged conditions of Australia and to work tirelessly all day to round up livestock and are still used for that purpose today. These guys are also independent thinkers, which makes them well suited for herding without human supervision, but it can also mean trouble if they are not challenged to do a specific task. Australian Kelpies need an outlet to use their mental and physical energy, or they'll create an outlet for themselves, which may include chewing, digging, or other destructive Ruining behaviors. Your house. Be prepared to offer hours of daily exercise and mental engagement, whether in the form of jogging, hiking, retrieving games, trick training, herding, agility, swimming, disc dog events, or almost any other competitive canine sport. A Kelpie is not meant to be on a leash at all times, so make sure you provide free running opportunities to your pup in a safe area away from traffic. But remember, while these dogs might have go-go-go personalities, don't count them for a movie night. They're just as happy to curl up on the couch with you, especially after a full day of activity. But I think that's... Uh, that point of happy to curl up you know and, and watch the film sort of thing with you not that they watch it it's true for most dogs some dogs don't aren't beagles don't quite often have that sort of affection uh but but most domesticated dogs they are now they survive to please their owners most of the time don't they um so i think that's sort of true with a lot of dogs Number 4. They're very intelligent dogs. Like most herding breeds, Australian Kelpies are extremely smart and biddable. In fact, the breed's intelligence rivals that of a famed Border Collie. Kelpies can be trained to do just about anything, and they're eager to learn new skills. Training is an excellent way to put a Kelpie's powerful brain to work, and can go a long way toward fending off boredom. Make sure you respect their intelligence while training your pup. Don't drill them over and over when it's clear that they already know something. This is a, lot, this is a thing that a lot of a lot of dog owners don't quite appreciate. Some dog owners think that just taking your dog out for a run is enough. Um, and sometimes your dog doesn't need the physical exercise. Sometimes you can go a day without physical exercise, but stimulate their brain. You know, there's two types of way to make a dog tired, physical or mental. Uh, and sometimes mental is just as important. Getting their brain working, the puzzles um, to try and get them to solve. Other than that, offering puzzle toys or playing games like fetch or hide and seek is also an option to keep their gifted mind in check. Number 5. They're not really suitable for apartment living. Kelpies were bred to herd side. sheep across vast open spaces. While these dogs don't need a farm and a flock to thrive, they do appreciate a large fenced yard and lots of opportunities for exercise. As such, these guys will probably not be suitable in an apartment. If you live in condos and apartment buildings, Australian Kelpie may not be the right breed for you. These dogs will do better in large homes, and they will definitely look forward to having their own spaces being as independent as they already are. Best dog. Uh, best dog for if you live in an apartment, you're elderly, you can't walk as much. A whippet. Whippets, greyhounds, the sight hounds, basically. Great, really, really good. They don't need a lot of exercise. They need a little burst, and the way they go, you can they'll sleep for the rest of the day. Number six, their training needs. The natural herding instincts of Australian Kelpie can make it hard for them to live with small children or other pets, as they have a tendency to nip in order to round up whoever or whatever they feel needs to be herded. Their distrust of strangers may also make things difficult when you have people over. But all of these tendencies can be kept under control and redirected to constructive behaviors with the right training, especially if socialization training begins early in life. How true is that? Uh, so, you know, some dogs in inherently aren't great with other animals or with other um, types of dogs. But it's all about how you bring them up. 
most of the time, granted, there's still some some genetics and and whatnot. But how you bring them up, Lena, for example, our Jack Russell, she's amazing with cats. But Jack Russell's, you know, shelters won't give you a cat if you have a Jack Russell. Even that, you know, Lena's amazing. An Australian Kelpie into your family, make sure you're prepared to give them the training they need to provide everyone with a safe and positive living environment. Thankfully, due to their eager to please personalities, training Australian Kelpies is not that big of a task. They're also very intuitive and they learn commands pretty quickly. You can train your pup with a firm hand and consistent direction. For best results, begin training early, keep training sessions short, and use positive reinforcement techniques. You can use games and fast paced activities during training, which will help them master basic commands and learn new tricks. Number 7. Grooming them is fairly easy. A relatively low-maintenance breed, the Australian Kelpie has a thick, water-repellent double coat that sheds regularly. Brushing their coat on a regular basis with a firm bristled brush is all that is required to keep your dog looking fresh and clean. Regular bathing will remove the natural oils in the weather-resistant coat and dry out the skin, so bathing them once a month will be sufficient. Active Australian Kelpies often wear their nails down naturally, but it's always a good idea to check them weekly to see if they need a trim. Otherwise, just keep the ears clean and don't forget to brush their teeth frequently for their good overall health and and fresh breath. Number 8. Taking care of Australian Kelpie Puppies Kelpie puppies can be very destructive if they get bored, so it will be very important to make sure your home is puppy-proof. You must remove anything that could be a potential safety hazard or that you don't want to see ruined by your Kelpie. In addition to puppy-proofing your home, make sure that you select a trusted veterinarian to bring your dog to after you bring him home. Also, the change in environment can cause stress to a Kelpie puppy, so be sure to give them plenty of attention. It'll also be important to start training and socializing your dog from a young age so they get used to different people and places and learn how to act appropriately. Number 9. Their Health Despite being hardy working dogs with a lifespan of 12 to 15 years, Australian Kelpies are prone to a couple of health conditions. All right, I'm going to guess. Um, they, they, so they're not huge dogs. So I don't see things like hip dysplasia or anything being a massive problem. Uh, what, could go, what could be wrong? Maybe ear infections because they've got their... No, because their ears don't go down. They look like a dog that would be fairly sturdy and not have many health problems. Maybe there's some inside or um, possibly the joints. Um, the, maybe the the joints just from the movement, the constant movement and arthritis and things like that maybe. But they look like fairly sturdy dogs. Hip and elbow dysplasia, a skeletal condition that causes the ball and socket of the joints to rub and grind together, are common in Kelpies. A common genetic... I'm going to assume the dysplasia is because of the movement and they're always, they're always moving. You get dysplasia quite a lot with larger dogs, things like Labradors, because of their physical weight. But that doesn't seem the problem here. So it must be the movement, the constant movement ends up rubbing away. Um, yeah, I, I don't see the other reason why. A disease known as cerebellar abiotrophy, or CA, also impacts Kelpies. There are two forms of this disease. One affects Australian Kelpie puppies and the other affects adult dogs. CA affects cerebellum, the part of the brain that regulates movement and so can cause lack of balance and coordination, and dogs with the disease often have a wobble in their walk. When it's diagnosed in puppies, it can be treated, but older dogs diagnosed with CA tend to have a worse prognosis. While it may seem overwhelming, this condition can be diagnosed and treated to prevent undue pain and suffering. If you notice any signs of CA in your pup, you gotta alert your veterinarian. There's a genetic test available that can give a prognosis. We also recommend taking your canine friend to the veterinary clinic regularly to make sure that there are no other signs of concern. Number 10. Story of the Red Dog There's a famous real-life story that revolves around Red Dog, a Kelpie cattle dog cross, and how the dog develops a strong bond with his human. Red Dog was believed to have been born in the town of Paraburdu, Western Australia in 1971. His second owner was John Stazanelli, a bus driver with Hammersley Iron, who took the dog with him in his bus. With John, Red Dog traveled as far as Perth, Broome, Roeburn, Point Sampson, and Port Hedland. Following Stasnoli's death in 1975, Red Dog spent a lot of time traveling on his own. He was also taken in by many members of the community and a veterinarian who treated him. Each time he visited the vet, it was with a new owner. Red was made a member of the Dampier Salt Sport and Social Club and the Transport Workers Union. And he was also given a bank account with the Bank of New South Wales. The bank was said to have used him as a mascot with the slogan, If Red Banks at the Wales, then you can too. Although Red Dog was well-liked, it is believed that it was deliberately poisoned in 1979 with strychnine. 
Red Dog was buried by veterinarian Rick Fenny in a secret unmarked grave around Roburn, Western Australia. Fenny has also written a book called Pip, My First Red Kelpie, that talks about his time with Red Dog. There's also a movie called Red Dog based on the same story. Ah, might have to check that one out. Um, they seem like real hardy dogs, very similar to the shepherds where they need to work um, because they're herding dogs. Intelligent, intelligent. I bet they can be stubborn as well. Uh, but interesting to know about the Kelpie. I said, I've heard of the Kelpie. Of course, I've heard of the Kelpie, but I wouldn't have been able to tell you what they look like. And I wouldn't have known what they did. Now we do. Now we all know. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.